Hi, Scissorin here with another Diablo 4 video and in this video we're going to be comparing and talking about the three classes available in the first beta test. I will have a lot of other videos that will cover things like opinions and uh, itemization as well as videos that will cover each individual class more in depth. This is just going to be generically talking about all three, what I enjoyed the most and things like that. So I started out playing a Sork because Sork is just better than anything else by default. It is of course my favorite class and what I was really looking forward to playing. A lot of the abilities early on are quite boring. They're basically auto attacks that are kind of forced on mouse button one. And uh, that probably was the least problem for the Sork because fairly early, I think around level 10 or 12, I was able to completely remove mouse button one. I've talked a little bit about the mouse button one issues in uh in other videos but uh, diablo 4 even though it has a force move only button doesn't really work exactly the one uh, you would want it to behave but sork doesn't really have a huge problem with that there are some abilities that you can have on mouse button one that only activate when you hold down shift and that ended up being really really good and just it felt great it was incredibly good at all things because it has really really good defensive abilities it has really good crowd control it has really good damage and aoe and that is why sork is the most overtuned and overpowered thing of the beta we also saw later when doing the world bosses that pretty much only sork players or a few rogue players were surviving the world bosses I've seen just a large amount of barbarians and rogues dying to that. And that's a little because barbs, they have to get like really, really in the action. It's a new boss, so people weren't exactly sure how, where to stand. You know, everything's new on softcore. That's fine because you get to try and try again. But, you know, I, I know a large majority of the people that went up against the world boss on hardcore were just wiped out. Uh, Noogie got one shot. I got one shot. And that's because I didn't buy an anti-poison elixir and the poison is very strong. Now this ended up not being a problem for the Sorks because not only do they have one ability where they get a huge uh, like energy shield bonus like a big ward thing uh, from the ice block thing, they have multiple. They also have sort of cheat deaths already through their legendary so Sork is absolutely like the perfect class to play for the early access. You want to make sure that you're strong, you can farm some gear, that's uh, that's the one. It feels really good to play. So that was pretty fun. It's a, it's a little overtuned, but there are a lot of cool things. And you're already starting to feel like Sork can have some sort of builds. Diablo 4 has like a lucky shot kind of thing, which you could think of the stat as like proc shot. Because other things will be 30% chance when you have a lucky shot that um, something happens. If you're able to get like, you know, a 50% chance that any shot is a lucky shot, these things will be happening quite a lot more often. And all the builds have this. It's really, really cool and fun to build around. I was building around that on my Sork that died. And I basically had, it was a 30% chance when my Hydra got a lucky shot that it would cast the Ice Nova. Things are a little bit interesting in the beta as well, because not every class has that many things that it can discover from the dungeons. There are basically dungeons that will guarantee a legendary stat that you can import into the gear you want. And Arb doesn't have that many, I think. I can't remember. But a lot of the ones that you see that are accessible are outside like the range that we're allowed to go. So the second class that I played after dying on my Sork was a Rogue. And the Sork was so fun, I'm actually already making a new one as well. But uh, I did get a rogue, finished like all the quests and all the storyline that we have available. It doesn't really have any mitigation stuff that was super interesting in the same way. It has like, like shadow cloak and some invisibility stuff, but nothing like the big like boom, I get a huge shield that like repels damage for like eight seconds or whatever, uh, similar to the sword and the abilities. Oh my god, especially the legendaries, and I've found so many more legendaries on my rogue. They were so fun. I had one that gives like the shotgun-like ability that I have that goes through monsters. Each time it hits a monster, it forks out. If you see in the background, just like the, the forks that go out, looks absolutely amazing. And it's kind of sad. I can't actually show off my character while I'm talking. We have to use the past recordings. 
Just I've been playing hardcore, so when it's gone, it's gone. Uh, which is honestly not the best choice while, you know, making these videos. It'd be better to have them for content creation. But it's been so fun, too, to really feel how does hardcore in Diablo feel. And then you can see here are some buffs that I experimented with. First, I would do things like the, the purple buff for clearing. It basically, it's like shadow, void damage, whatever. And um, it creates an explosion every time it hits and kills something. So whenever I would shoot this and combine that with the fork from uh, my legendary, it just annihilates packs. And I would try to like run around things, hurting them a bit like sheep. Boom, in the middle, everything is gone. For bosses, I would use this green uh, poison ability because I was really, really struggling for single target damage. And you do get some mastery things. There's one where eventually when you use your auto attack enough, you just have infinite mana, basically. You can just spam your ability. There's another one where you're basically supposed to play... Um, you shoot three times and then your ability is powered up. Well, it says each level is supposed to change your ability in different ways. But the most of the ones I saw was, well, you know, you want to shoot three times because they're more powerful then. So uh, that makes sense. And uh, that's pretty much what I ended up doing for bosses. I would do like the shoot three times, use the poison, and then shoot with the uh, the poison bolt. And even then, my, my damage felt like a fraction of what I had on the sword. It was a lot lower. Playstyle, though, on the rogue felt incredible incredibly zippy just so zoomy while the sork was pretty fast and i was like running around putting down hydras and some blizzard here and there the teleports and stuff had so much more and more cooldown whereas uh, especially at one point i had double uh dash the space bar ability on the rogue as well as having like the uh quick slash move forward thing and you can see here that i'm just zooming through the world like jump jump slash slash gotta wait for the cooldowns after that but it is a lot faster than other abilities I haven't tried out a melee rogue yet at all. I will try that out more. I didn't hear as good things about the melee rogue as I did about the ranged, and ranged was quite fun. I did experiment with a few abilities, but I was trying to, you know, make a build and stick to that. And then uh, I'll hopefully make a new one and respec a lot, but really, really interesting how zippy it felt, and uh, it worked well with legendaries. Like, there were cool abilities for it. The Barbarian is what I'd heard the most bad things about, so much so that I started the character on Softcore because people have told me it was so weak and so bad uh, and that everybody was struggling to make it work. Some people were even dying 11 plus times on bosses and just weren't making this class work for them. That's because they haven't discovered the secret build yet. Now this badass character is on Softcore and look how cool I look while we're on the loading screen. Like that's really impressive. Um, as somebody that comes from Path of Exile, where you basically look like trash unless you pay for it, kind of cool to, uh, to look that cool. Um, but, I have audio off right now, you'll have to suffer through that. But, I'm basically a Thorns build. Now, this build still has a lot of issues, and so does Barb in general. Melee, obviously, in general, just known for having a lot of issues in these games. So normally there would be a lot more monsters, but, uh... Let's hope a bunch come up here. All right, that'll do. So I just taunt, and I mean, I would normally, you know, heal and auto attack at the same time, but look at the amount of damage Thorns does in this game. It is literally clearing packs, and I've set up so some of my abilities, like my mouse button and one ability now, is generating Thorns while I am playing. And it's actually just incredibly interesting because in most games thorns is an absolute meme whereas here it felt so powerful in the start compared to every other ability uh in the start there is a big issue with the uh, generating fury or rage whatever you want to call it actually very time consuming and very difficult whereas like you know the sorc's mana is just regening the rogue's mana whatever it's called is regening so it's super easy you would need to hit for like five to ten seconds to be able to cyclone or whirlwind for three seconds pretty much so it's it's a little annoying and i see why people are frustrated by it early scry and a few other people were able to do some really good barbs and get to level 25 and people said that it gets fairly powerful uh around level 20 
Barbs also does have an issue. There's like a, a mini quest for each class. Sork has like a quest where you get to specialize one ability. It becomes even more stronger. Sometimes works passively. Uh, the rogue gets that specialization I talked about where you have the... There will be like three shields over there. And once you've sh shot three times, your abilities are stronger. Barb doesn't have anything because the quest that it needs to do... Um, people are saying it is outside the area. So... Yeah, it starts over here. So you can't do the Barbarian Master Quest. That's a little unfortunate. So Barb is definitely the least exciting one in the beta. It is kind of interesting though. It does have a lot of items, which is a little similar to the Rogue. I know I didn't mention that. Uh, definitely part of the problem with not being in game on characters that are dead. The Rogue has similar things where it has like two melee weapons, I think. Or maybe it was just one melee weapon. And then um, your skills basically automatically switch um and, and use it so this is something that's like very different than poe and poe you would have to switch your weapon swap and nothing would switch automatically for you like that maybe that'll happen in poe too but here you know every ability you switch to the weapon you can see that here it uses the mace now it's using the sword and then by holding over the ability um and i think it's yeah here mouse button three you can select different styles so okay now i'll actually use my legendary weapons uh for the rend etc so that's kind of cool you have a lot of choice there one thing that was a little annoying for the barbarian that we're playing now is that um some games path of exile especially has like a thing for the weapons attack in place right so that you're not running towards the enemy uh, or that the game is positioning for you. This game doesn't have that. It has it as a toggle, but that means you're literally standing still, right? It's the same as holy and shift. It's not just when you want to use the ability. So uh, that's definitely one of uh, what I would consider a downside. And the barb honestly didn't feel too bad with having a skill on mass button one because, well, I'm in melee anyway, and I probably do want to attack. It wasn't too bad. The worst for that was the Rogue. Sork didn't even feel that bad with it, but both on Rogue and Sork I ended up removing the mouse button one entirely. Again, it's a little hard to explain over a video, but if you play around with it yourself, you will understand. So far though, there's been really, really cool legendaries for each build that's been like interesting. Whirlwind periodically pulls enemies to you, etc. But yeah, there, there are a lot of different legendary things that you can get. If you have the same thing on multiple items, it will choose the most powerful one. You will not be able to have like, you know, six additional Hydras by having one or all your legendaries with plus one max Hydra. I ended up on most characters without gambling. I would end up finding anywhere from like three to seven legendaries uh, with the gambling system that uses these obols. Uh, it's one in three pretty much to get a legendary so they are incredibly common as soon as you hit level 25 most people just gamble for legendaries for each slot and then you get a lot of interesting skill interactions that you didn't have before so i'm gonna play around with like more builds and stuff and i'll make an individual video for each class hopefully stork rogue and the barb so that's pretty much all I had for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and feel free to let me know like what kind of builds you ended up with and what you enjoyed doing the most. So thanks for watching. Stop if you liked the video. But more importantly, try to die less than I do.